So how do you answer these kind of questions where, I mean, it's kind of, we almost don't know quite enough yet about normal curves. So so here's how you want to think about it, and actually it'll, it'll pay, on, pay off later on. They're telling us the mean is 69.6 inches, so that's right smack dab in the middle. Um, and because these are symmetric distributions, the mean is and the mean and the median are the same. So that tells me 50%. Let me draw a line on that. 50% of the distribution is on this side of it, of that mean, median, and 50% is on this side. So we're going to use that in order to, in order to estimate. And of course, in my open math, these are all, or my math lab, these are all uh, multiple choice. So that that will help. Um, okay. So what do we have? Uh, so the total area under the curve. Well, as you read in the text, uh, everything. If all we have is what's here, that's a hundred percent. And as a proportion, we write that as one. Okay, so now they want us to estimate the area of less than 67 inches. So here's the height of 67 inches. Now, what to keep in mind is we just can't take 1 and divide it by. I mean, people have tried that. I mean, we can't take what's that, a spread of, a spread of, uh, what's that, 16? So we can't just take uh, 1 divided by 16 or 1 and divide it by however many lines there are because... They aren't symmetric. These, this isn't this is an equal equally spaced. So I've got a lot more of it here than I do way down here. So you got to keep that in mind. So I know if half of it is less than seventy, and there's a lot more of it in between that mean that sixty six point sixty nine point six and sixty seven than there is less than that. So you know I'm guessing I know a quarter somewhere around 0 0.25, 0 0.3, clearly less than a half, right? So if you start looking at those multiple choice questions, you know, choices on my open math, you'll see there's a, there's one that's very clear. clear. Okay, um, now they're asking us what's the, estimate the f value of, the frequency of values above 67. So that's all of these. Well, if I were to say that they say that this part down here, here, let me color that in. If I know this part, and I'm guessing, you know, I don't I don't know for sure without more work. If I'm calling this 0.25, then that tells me above it is going to be 1 minus 0.25 because I know everything under the curve is 1. So if I have a quarter of it underneath it, I have to have 3 quarters of it or... 0.75 above it, if I'm going to talk about it as a probability. So 0 0.75, 0 0.25. Then they want us to come up with a uh, relative frequency between 67 and 70. Well, 70 is pretty darn close. Here, let me go back to a red. I know 70 is pretty darn close to the mean. And if I know that 50% of it is less than the mean, and I've got 25% of it less than here, 50 minus 25 would be, there'll be 25% or 0.25 to express that as a, as a proportion that would be between those. Okay, and again, you look at those multiple choice answers on my, my, my stat lab, you'll, you'll see it's pretty clear. And greater than 70, well, if it's greater than 70, it's going to be slightly less because 70 is a little bit higher than the mean. So that tells me it's going to be a little bit less than 50, but not much less. It's going to be pretty close to 50%. So I hope this helps you go back and try that question on my open math or get a feel, begin to get a feel of how we work with these distributions. When you study the 68, 95, 99.7 rule and then those cumulative, the normal cumulative function, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's not too bad. Okay, hope that helps.